This is an amazing worm filter septic system. I've had this one going for about two and a half years with almost no maintenance. The best thing about it, it's ecologically safe and I can build a unit like this in about a day with no heavy equipment for 150 bucks. A regular septic system can cost you as much as $10,000 or more. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video because we're gonna take a look inside and harvest some worms. Okay, let's go to the blackboard so I can show you how this thing works. Three inch sewer pipe. And when I flush the toilet, it ends up here. The solids stay on top and the water passes down through the layers of filter, out through this tube and into the hole where it's absorbed by all the trees in the area that are gonna infiltrate this hole with their roots and get their nutrients. The worms are gonna dispose of the solids on top and turn them into worm castings, which I can then use in my orchards. Let's go build one. We're gonna be using this blue plastic barrel. I get these on Uline for about a hundred bucks. And we're gonna cap it with this polyethylene lid. This is a snap-on lid. I get this for a packet of six, I think for about 75 bucks. And we're gonna use this uh, irrigation fitting. You get this at the irrigation supply store. Um, this is for one inch Driscoll pipe. It just goes in like that, twist, take a wrench, give it a little twist, and you're good to go. So I put the rubber washers on this irrigation fitting. And I'm gonna put this through the hole in the barrel and then I'm gonna put this other rubber washer on here and then I'm gonna tighten it down with this piece. Okay, so my barrel is done. I've got my hole drilled and I've got my irrigation fitting plumbed and I've checked it for water tightness. It holds water. So now we're gonna take it down to the site and install it. We've got a little rain today but it's Hawaii, what are you gonna do? Um, this barrel's nice and level, and I've got it connected to my three inch sewer pipe, and then I've got a one inch Driscoll hooked up, and that's running into that hole over there. To be honest, the hardest part of this whole project was digging that hole. We have a lot of rocks in the soil here. So I like to start with a layer of big rocks, and what this is gonna do is just give me a base to keep the um, hole that the one inch Driscoll is running out of from getting plugged up. So I'm gonna make a little structure on the bottom. I filled up the bottom now, and now I'm gonna start with even smaller rocks. I still call these medium sized rocks. I'm kind of puzzle piecing them together just to uh, fill in the gap so that the little rocks don't get in there and mess things up. Smallish rocks, top of the medium rocks. We're just below halfway. I'm just gonna add the gravel, and then we're gonna start with the wood chips. This is a pea gravel. I bought this, because I don't have any rocks this size on property, but if you have gravel of any kind, that'll work just fine. Before I put on the wood chips, I like to put down a little insurance in the form of a screen and what I do is I just take some netting. This is bug screen. And this is gonna allow me to pull the wood chips out in the case that something goes wrong without having to redo the whole barrel. It's time to fill this hole with logs. I've taken my Driscoll pipe and I put it through this feed bucket here. This is gonna give me a little airspace so that all these roots here don't clog this pipe. Okay, let's get going on these logs. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's go up top, open up that bin, and harvest some worms. Here come the worms.
Now they say you only need 10 to make this work. There's a lot more than that there. You don't want to use any kind of worms for this. You want to make sure to use a composting worm. In this case, I'm using uh, red wigglers from California. And I got those on island. Uh, somebody had imported them, but uh, the indigenous worms here don't work. So make sure to get the red wigglers. Now it's time to test this thing. Before I finish, I like to put a second layer of screen right here. And that's gonna keep any critters from getting in there and eating my worms. These lids aren't really airtight. Remember, this is a biofilter. It's alive, so you're gonna to need to feed those worms. So use your toilet. Don't let it go more than 10 days without using it. And no harsh chemicals. And remember, paper should go in a bin to the side. You don't want it getting in there and clogging things up. Okay, if you'd like to see more content like this, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you next time.